I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before buying the Drake Herald, and we're starting right after this intro. Hello and welcome aboard your Drake Interplanetary Craft. Your systems are online. Welcome to a Star Citizen's Buyer's Guide. What's up, citizens? This is Subliminal here, and today we'll be discussing the features, functions, and benefits of the Drake Herald, or lack thereof. And we'll compare those features amongst competing ships so you can make an informed buying decision. In this review, I'll cover a brief overview, take a tour, compare stats, review pros and cons, and give you my thoughts on how CIG can make the Herald great for the first time. If you haven't seen it already after this review, check out my loadout guide for the Drake Herald in the info card above and on the end screen. Special thanks to all the support from patrons and channel members. It takes a while to make one of these and your support is greatly appreciated. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. The Herald is a data runner spacecraft sold by Drake Interplanetary. It is an unusually specialized design for Drake, focusing entirely on the process of securing, storing, transmitting, and moving data as quickly as possible. The Herald is built with an armored computer core and an STA M6A1 high power broadcast array that allows for long range transmission. They are used by a variety of corporations and by independent contractors who specialize in data running missions. Drake Interplanetary is a human spacecraft manufacturer headquartered on Borea. They design, manufacture, and sell spaceships in the Star Citizen universe. Their ships have a characteristically robust and geometrical design that utilizes many low-tech materials. Drake's target group also includes militias and pirates. The former CEOs Jan and John Dredge cultivated the outlaw image from the beginning of the company, which raised controversies on Drake's responsibilities for pirate-related crimes. As of today, the Herald is no longer for sale on the Pledge Store. When it was, it sold for $85. It is available as a loaner to Mercury Star Runner owners alongside the Freelancer base. And the Herald is available for sale at Levski's Teaches Ship Shop for almost 1.2 million Alpha UEC, but is not available to rent. Now that we know a little bit more about the Drake Herald, let's take a tour. If you'd like to skip this tour, the timestamp is on screen and in the description. On the nose, you'll notice it's size 3 hardpoint with a gimbaled size 2 Gatling equipped. Inside of these silos, we have four size 1 missiles. Here we have what looks like a side entrance, but it's actually just a false door. Can someone tell me why out of all the ships, this is the only one that has a door on the right side? This looks like where data pods can be stored and released. This flap that is labeled SATA M6A1 is actually the high-powered broadcast array for long-range data transmission that we talked about earlier. Under this little T-Rex arm wing, we have a gimbaled size 1 Gatling. These are just one of many maneuvering thrusters that don't seem to actually do anything. Around the rear, we have what I am pretty sure is the greatest main thruster to hull size ratio of any JPEG ship or otherwise in the verse. This is utter insanity. On the starboard side, we have access to the cabin. Let's climb inside. Straight ahead, we have a weapon rack. The Herald is full of server racks. Instead of me mentioning every time I take a look at one, I'll just let you know there are racks on racks on racks in here. Control terminal is where all the magic will happen. For now, it's just got four MFDs. Not sure what these are, but reading the label, if you don't know what you're doing while handling them, you could die. So that's nice. Below this death box is where you lay your head to go to sleep. Here we have some emergency supplies and a sink for washing off that Rona. Yay, space shitter. Here we have some storage. We're back at the exit now, so let's head towards the flight deck. Oh, some more storage and emergency supplies. The Herald does not have the new building blocks UI, but I expect it will be coming in the upcoming 3.10 patch. It does have six MFDs and a 2D radar though. As for usual for a Drake ship, there is no ejection feature. But don't worry, if they can catch you and you get attacked, You'd be dead before you could eject anyway. Now that we've taken a tour, let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. Some ships that will have data running capabilities and some explorers. The Google Sheet document with the data is linked in the description. 
The Drake Herald weighs in at over 66,000 kilograms and takes fourth place. It fits in at 24 meters in length and takes sixth place. It tows zero SCU of cargo and ties in last place with a few other ships on this list. It has a max crew size of two and ties in fifth place with the Terrapin. It carries 583 quantum fuel units and ties in last place again. It cruises by with an SCM speed of 174 meters per second and takes third place. And it blazes by with a max speed of 1361. This is the fastest afterburner speed of any ship currently in the verse. But it has a maximum yaw pitch rate of 48 degrees per second and takes seventh place. It has a maximum yaw rate of 48 degrees as well and takes sixth place. These are just a little bit faster than the Freelancer Dur for perspective. And it has a maximum roll rate of 72 degrees per second and comes in dead last. It has a total hull HP of just over 5,500 and takes eighth place. It shoots peas with a default pilot DPS of 744 and takes sixth place. The Herald does not have a manned turret. It has a decent combined missile payload of just over 23,000 and takes fourth place. And the Drake Herald is available for sale in game for almost 1.2 million Alpha UEC and takes the fourth spot. This video is brought to you by my Locations of Stanton fan art series. There are four ways you can rock this collection. All viewers can download the mobile wallpapers for free. Desktop wallpaper versions are available to all patrons and channel members. Canvases and posters are available in the merch store and you can have them printed on metal from Display. Flaunt your love for Star Citizen and support the channel while doing so. All right, let's weigh some of the pros and cons. I would say its pros are, as far as metrics are concerned, it's fast as f but only in one direction and that's forward. It has a decent missile payload. Now for some things we can't see on paper, it has room for passengers and mission boxes in the cabin. It also has amenities like a bed to log out in, a weapon rack, and a toilet. For cons, I'd say, where do I begin? This is just my opinion, but I think it should have a longer than basic quantum fuel tank. It seems like this ship should have a much longer range. I'm not sure how this is possible, but the fastest ship in the game is also one of the slowest in every other direction than forward. We're talking yaw, pitch, and roll. And don't get me started on the retro thrust. It has terrible hull HP, about as much firepower as an Aurora. I know I mentioned this missile payload was decent, but it's not even close to its concept. And to add insult to injury, the missile racks can't even be swapped out for ones that hold larger missiles. If you'd like to skip this rant, the timestamp is on screen. This is the only flight ready JPEG ship. It has absolutely no use right now. I built a stealth loadout for it, thinking that it could be used to smuggle boxes or sneak up and cause a distraction. But even with its super low EM of 700-ish, its IR is over 6,000 and makes it visible from space. This may be accurate considering its massive thruster, but it does have a stealthy hull appearance. I've heard commenters say the ships handle like bricks, and until this, it was just a figure of speech. This actually does handle exactly like how I would expect a giant rocket propelled brick to fly. Look at this. I am not stroking my T-16,000M, I promise. And if you're considering taking it up on its max speed, this is going to be your most effective way of coming to a stop. Also, I should have recoupled here. I'm not normally one who gets mad at the difference between concept versus actual flight ready, but this has significantly less missiles than advertised. Sorry for you early backers. When designing my loadout, I added two size three missiles in Urkel. They have a 9,000 meter lock range, and even with the Herald being lit up like a Christmas tree, it would have been capable of striking outside its detection range. But nope, the missile racks are locked to the MSD 341s that hold four size ones with terrible lock ranges and low damage output. Speaking of damage output, actually, let me just stop here. Let's talk about how this ship can become relevant in 3.10.1 with minimal game development needed. First and most importantly, give us the ability to hack comma rays with this. They just added prisons, now it's time to give us more ways to stay out of them. I can't take credit for this, I found this idea somewhere on Reddit. This would make the Herald more relevant in the current game state than the Mantis in my opinion. Recently, missiles got a nerf. You can only launch one missile per pod, rather than dumping a full load at once. So, 
With this logic, the Harrow could now have two more size 3 missile racks per silo and still be not OP in my opinion. If we can't get this, at least allow us to put whatever size 3 rack we want. And finally, come up with some kind of a way in lore that these massive engines can idle in some sort of low energy mode so we can get a respectful IR signature to max the stealthy aesthetics of the ship. As for the other issues like handling, DPS, and hull HP, that's just balance and frankly it fits the design of the ship. Even if we don't see these changes made when data running hits the PU, this will most likely be a viable ship with its relatively low cost in the pledge store and in the game, provided data running is lucrative. Those are my thoughts, let me hear yours down in the comments. If you haven't already, check out my loadout guide for the Drake Herald here. If you enjoy my channel, there are six ways to support it. Number one, you can smash that like button. Number two, you can share this content with someone who may enjoy it. Number three, you can check out my locations of Stanton collection over at this plate. Number four, you can subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the circle here. Number five, you can become a channel member by clicking the join button below. And number six, if you're feeling generous, consider becoming a patron. Some pledge perks can be seen here, including desktop versions of my locations of stand collection available to all patrons. If not, your viewership is greatly appreciated. Until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.